Hi Steve. Today we've come to Pegwell Country Park. Um, it's down on the coast uh, outside of Ramsgate in Kent. Uh, it's a beautiful morning, a little bit chilly, but you can see it's nice and bright. We've got some fantastic views. I don't know whether you'll see across here really in the sunshine, um, but nice views across what you can see just on the edge there is Margate, I think, Margate Harbour that we can see. But we're gonna come and have a look around Pegwell Country Park, see what it's got to offer. Let's get back to you. Okay, Pegwell Bay Country Park is part of a larger Pegwell Bay Country uh, Reserve, Nature Reserve, which is managed by the Kent Wildlife Trust. So I've moved off of the main path that goes around Pegwell Bay Country Park, which is a nice hard solid path. I've moved on to these more natural paths now through the Country Reserve. Pegwell Bay Country Park was originally a landfill site and then uh, Kent County Council capped it and opened it up as a picnic site to the public in 1983. I'm just uh, wandering through the reserve here. I've seen an interesting structure sticking out of the water further around here, so I'm hoping we can get a better look at it. And I've just read an information board back there that tells us what it is, so I'm hoping you'll find this interesting. Uh, we're going to have a look and see what we can see where we can find it. I know I may be in a bit of silhouette here, but hopefully you'll get to see the sort of views you get walking across this path. I'm, I'm back into the Pegwell Country Park Trail now, so yeah, it's a good solid path. They've got all the way around the edge. It's built on top of a little sea wall. But uh, these mud flats and marshland areas give Pegwell Bay Country Reserve, the, you know, the, the National Reserve place, a Ransar status. Uh, Ransar means that it's an internationally recognised important area of wetland. So, uh, say all over the world, there's a, a, you know, lots of these sites. But Pegwell Bay Country Park is part of it. As I say, it's Pegwell Bay Country Park as part of Pegwell Bay Nature Reserve. So it's probably actually the Nature Reserve which has got the Ransar status. Uh, you can't see, I can tell you can't see, but down over here, that structure that I was trying to get to is a pier. Uh, it's old and derelict now, but there was an information board that I saw, and I'll put a picture up for you, that basically, at the, towards the end of World War I, they were struggling to get munitions across to France and tanks and things. And so they had three train ferries, and Pegwell Bay was a site where they built the pier, and then they could offload um, train, trains roll onto the ferry, cross to France and roll off the other side. And that operated from, from just over here in Pegwell Bay. Who would have known? Uh, I've also got a photo there of World War I anti-tank traps, um, which are obviously concrete based and uh, make a nice picture, I hope. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna give you a quick panoramic sweep of the, the scene in front of me. I, I don't think this is gonna come out well to be honest, let's go down here a bit because I'm shooting straight into the sun. But I'm trying to give you an idea. It's lovely scenery. It's pretty open though, so it's a bit blowy from time to time. Here's the path we're back on. But there's great uh, views across these wetlands, these mudlands, across to those cliffs leading up to Margate. But as I say, I'm not sure in the haze you're going to see that. So you may never, you may never see this video, bit of video clip or not. Let's see how it comes out at the end. Let's summarise Pegwell Bay Country Park a little bit. Some great views. Sorry to say you're not going to get a great view of them uh, here with the sun shining directly at them. Uh, children's play area. Nice solid path around the edge. Uh, it's built on top of a little sea wall. Um, toilets. Uh, a little cafe which isn't open at the moment so I can't uh, tell you. Uh, what the coffee's like. Actually, I'm not a coffee drinker, I'm a tea drinker, so I can't tell you what the tea's like. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice spot. 
to come and have a wander around. It's a bit blowy, I don't know whether you can hear that in the microphone or not. So uh, watch out on a windy day, you're going to want to wrap up just to keep the wind off you. But the other thing here is that just up the road there's an, another site sort of attached to this or something that you're certainly going to want to plan to visit at the same time probably just for a quick look. And they've got a replica Viking ship just up the road. Now you can walk from the park, obviously I've paid for my parking so I can stay here all day. Um, but I'm a bit tight on time so what I'm going to do is drive because there is another car park up at this Viking ship. Uh, and then I'm going to get up there and I'm going to tell you uh, what that's all about. But it's, it's worth considering these two uh, sites together because it's, I say, it's half a mile maybe up the road or something. It's not far at all. But just uh, because of what I've got planned later today, I'm going to I'm going to drive it and be lazy. Right, I'll catch you uh, back at the Viking ship and, and, and we'll talk about that then. So this is the big Viking ship that I was telling you about when I was back in Pegwell uh, Bay Country Park, just down the, the bottom of the road, about half a mile. There's a picnic site at the top here, so parking's free up here, which is nice. A uh, little cafe and some toilets. Uh, and then Hugin. This is a replica Viking longship. Uh, I've cycled past here a couple of times and I thought it was just sort of a model, but uh, researching for this video, I found that actually this boat was sailed in 1949 over from Denmark and it was to commemorate the 1500 year anniversary of the Vikings invading Britain. Now it actually landed down at Viking Bay down the road a little bit but it's been moved here and it was gifted to Ramsgate and Broadstairs by the Daily Mail newspaper apparently. Quite why they would have been involved I don't know. But uh, it's had a lot of restoration work done it back in 2004-2005 uh, but it's the real deal. They sailed this over um, and it floated and, and everything. So that's pretty impressive. I wouldn't like to guess, I'm, I'm going to guess it's sort of, I don't know, 30, 35 metres long maybe, something like that. But it's worth it. If you've uh, gone to Pegwell Bay Country Park, this is just up the road. Um, so you can stop up here and have a cup of tea uh, and check this out as well. This is, this is quite exciting. Now it seems as if this is quite a popular area of the country for historic landings because archaeologists believe that it was in this area, maybe not Pegwell Bay exactly, but around here, that Julius Caesar landed on both his Roman invasions of Britain. In addition to that, in 597 AD, the monk St Augustine, maybe it was a monk, I don't know, but St Augustine was sent from Rome by the Emperor of Rome to come and convert us all to Christianity. Um, and he came in here as well and then went on to Canterbury. But uh, so it seems like a popular area for landings. I guess it must be, um, the coastline or something here that lends itself to that or whether it's just uh, the way the tide brings you across from Europe. But yeah, check it out. It's the real deal. That's probably it for this video today. So if you've watched and enjoyed watching, please give me the thumbs up and the like. If you are interested in seeing more of these videos, then please subscribe to the channel. Obviously, I'm still starting out. I haven't got many videos I'm under, under my belt so far, but if you're enjoying, a subscription really help. Thanks. See you next time.